the world is changing so fast, um, so does technology. If we look back uh, 10 years ago, we will see that uh, Java Enterprise Editions have suffered many uh, uh, changes. For example, uh, 10 years ago, our client side was developed uh, using HTML, and we tried to avoid using uh, JavaScript. We sent to the browser only HTML code. Our server side was implemented by Java using the typical pattern servlet plus GSP, maybe using AGVs, and the persistent layer was implemented using the uh, rational database management system. But now this is changing. HTML5 is a reality, um, new CSS specification, and new JavaScript API. Also, with the grow popularity of uh, jQuery, almost all um, client site is being implemented using JavaScript. Also, we are using REST uh, architecture, so we send JSON to the browser, also Ajax, sending XML. Server site also have changed. With Java Enterprise Edition 6, um, many new um, features are implemented within the container, like CTA or uh, GPA. But also, persistent layer have changed. Um, no SQL solutions are uh, gaining terrain to the typical uh, SQL systems management. So, the, uh, the development site is changing, but testing frameworks are changing too. Hello, my name is Alex Soto. I'm a computer engineer. I work in an international um, pharmaceutical company uh, developing um, embedded devices. Also, I describe myself as an active blogger and a speaker. Today, um, I'm going to talk about how to write tests. Concretely, how to write unit tests, which is the 80% of your test code, also integration tests, and finally, acceptance tests. So uh, let's just start. Unit test is a method by which the smallest stable part of uh, an application is validated. Um, unit test gives you um, more advantages. Some of them are confidence to change, uh, gives you quick feedback um, about the correctness of the software you have developed. You can write your production code and then you can uh, run the test and see that it uh, runs as you expected without waiting to, stay, to detect an issue and production code. And also, um, unit test access to documentation. I really hate um, writing documentation in Javadoc, basically because they can mislead you, but the code will always, will always uh, send you the truth. So to write a unit test uh, effectively, you must follow the first rule. This is, your tests must run fast. If they are fast, you will run more often, so you will receive uh, the feedback more often. And um, your test will be uh, fast if you resist the temptation to access database, network, or file system. The other one is isolation. Your test must be isolated. From, from themselves, because um, one uh, test method cannot um, modify the result of another test method, but also the test, uh, sorry, the um, source code under test must be isolated. You cannot have calls to external components like uh, other classes or other subsystems like databases. Your test must be repeatable. Each execution should return the same result. If not, you, are, you don't know who are telling you the truth. Also, your test must be self-validating. Uh, as we said, uh, test access to documentation. So everyone with a quick overview to the test must know exactly what is the reason, what is the purpose of this test. And last, timely you must write first the test and then your production code. Because if you, run, if you write first the, the test, your production code will be designed to be stable. So we have seen that we've got three different layers with three different approaches, client side, uh, server side, and persistent side. So we need different frameworks to write unit tests. The first one, the client side. In fact, 
we can say that we are going to see how to test JavaScript. Uh, in, to test JavaScript, there are many frameworks like QUnit or JustMine or JSUnit, but one that I really feel comfortable is uh, GS Test Driver. Because GS Test Driver aims us to write JavaScript, uh, JavaScript test codes like we are already done with uh, GUnit. So to write a test with GS test, test driver, it's as easy as write your test code, optional files that, that are features. A feature is uh, HTML code that is embedded into the test and can be used uh, during the test execution. This is really, help, this is really helpful when you are uh, writing JavaScript code that modifies the JAMA structure. Finally, a configuration file, this is um, like a class path in Java where you um, indicate to the GS test driver where are the uh, test code and where are the um, production code. So we've got JavaScript. This JavaScript must be run into a browser. A browser only understands about HTML, so it seems that we will need to write HTML files. But GS test drive does not require this because um, comes with the server. You start this server, this server will create the HTML file for you, and then you choose which browser you want to test, to run the test, and then you connect to the others provided for the GS test driver server. Also, uh, see that we have seen that uh, your test must be isolated. Can be uh, some parts of your JavaScript code that executes um, sorry, not to execute, requires a, ser a server response, but you cannot uh, talk to an external system. So Sinon is a mocking library for JavaScript that can help you to uh, create fake uh, server response. For example, to create a fake JSON response is as easy as create the, uh, calling the stab method. In this case, we are stabbing the Ajax method of jQuery and simple return this um, JSON um, structure. See how it works? In this project, you've got a jQuery plugin. That's uh, simple, it gets data from a server and then prints it into the HTML structure. If you look the test that executes this, here in this, in this line, we are setting the feature because a jQuery plugin requires an HTML structure to, mo to be modified. This is the fake HTML. Here is sign-on, stabbing the response. In this case, we are returning a book, the Silmarillion. And then we call the jQuery plugin. With this uh, element, is the same defined as feature. And then we ascertain that the response is equals of this paragraph. And in this case, because uh, GS test drive also have a really nice integration with Maven and Eclipse, I've created a POM, which will um, run automatically the GS test drive server and also will open the browser. In this case, I've configured it to run Chrome. So I'm going to run. Here is uh, opening the server. And yes, have opened it, have called the, um, the um, uh, uh, executed the JavaScript uh, code. And then, if you look here, the tests have passed without any problem. So, Okay, we have seen how to test the JavaScript code. If you are not using any, uh, if you are only using Java in your server side, you are not using a polyglot approach, 
I'm sure that uh, most of us will agree that GUnit is the de facto test framework. I think that does not require many presentation, but uh, I would like to talk about two uh, libraries. The first one is Ampress. We've, we've said that our unit test must act as a documentation, and a good point to start is naming the test correctly without uh, creating uh, names that implies the, um, the implementation details, but only the behavior we are testing. But also it's important to test, uh, sorry, to describe correctly the assertion. And Hamcris is a library of matchers for building uh, Hamcris in, uh, Hamcris, uh, matchers in, um, in a more natural language. See, for example, using the typical asset equal of GUnit, here we see that uh, we are testing that SR equals true ranks contains officer rank. It's, it's a strange to, to see, to, not to see, but to read this sentence. But with Amcris, the same assertion is as easy as assert that officer rank is one of captain and commander. Also, we can uh, read more uh, uh, easily, assert that age is 10 or Oh, whoa, well, uh, we've got a problem. Well, you must trust me that here is saying, as, as or that, <laughs> oh yes. Mm. Okay, let's. We'll paste here. No, it's all right, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is the bad example. As I equals true, range contains officer rank. And the good one is here. Well, so you can compare both. As of that, officer rank is one of captain and commander. It's more uh, readable this, this sentence than the first one. I remove all this. It's not readable, sorry. But the anchor is, will help you to make it <laughs> readable your test. Um, the other library that I, I want to present you is Mojito. Um, a code under test must be isolated, doesn't have to uh, make calls to external components, but code, code's nature is to have uh, external components. So Mokito uh, helps you to create mock objects. Mock objects are simulated objects that mimic the behavior of the real objects. What are really like uh, about Mokito is that Mokito is thought in terms of expressiveness. You read the sentence and you will understand what you are mocking. And this is not read, I suppose. I think that will be. See that in this case, we are telling that officer DAO, that is a typical DAO pattern that access to database, when we call find officer by age with a 22, then return a new officer. This is an instance that is created on the test. So we are not accessing the database. So Mokito help us to not connect to external components. And finally, to close the unit testing part is the persistent site. It's uh, strange to think about uh, Java Enterprise Edition application without uh, persistent layer. 
But uh, we said that if uh, you, you cannot access a file system or a network. So how we can write unit tests that implies a database connection? This will depend on if you are using an SQL approach or no SQL approach. Let's start with SQL approach or the typical uh, rational database management system. You must, uh, in your unit test, you must avoid hitting the database because it's a slow operation. But if you are using an in-memory database, this operation will be fast. And in Java, there are many uh, in-memory databases. For example, Derby, HyperSQL, or H2. So um, you use an in-memory database, and your tests will run fast. The other problem is the isolation. I have said that previous execution of a test cannot um, modify the result of, the, of the another test. So if one test inserts one registry to the database, next uh, test execution will see that change. To avoid this problem, exists, uh, DBUnit exists. DBUnit is a GUnit extension, which is the responsible of maintaining the state of the database before its execution. So you simply define a data set that is the known state, and then, this seems to be more readable maybe, and then you simply call clean insert method um, with the, the finite database. So before each execution, uh, DB unit will clean your database and insert an, the known state of, of, the, of data. So uh, your um, test method will run correctly. The problem is with NoSQL because it's an heterogeneous system. It's a heterogeneous system, and we've got a document approach, column approach, graph approach, and it, there is no uh, general solution for this kind of mm, systems. For example, I've analyzed MongoDB. MongoDB have no in-memory mode. In fact, exists uh, an issue that uh, someday will implement MongoDB in memory mode, and also there is no um, isolation framework like DBUnit. For Neo for Java, it's quite better. We've got an embedded mode, so we can write uh, tests, but uh, also is um, is not a, a full supported. Uh, like DB unit with uh, rational database management systems. But uh, it's not all lost because I'm writing NoSQL unit. This is a, um, a framework, a G unit extension that works more or less like uh, DB unit, but for NoSQL systems. For now, I'm only uh, supporting MongoDB, but in uh, next month, I will implement New4G, CoachDB, and Cassandra. Let's see how it works. Simple is um, we are going to test a book manager that returns uh, an object from MongoDB. See that? What I've said that the test is not called um, book manager test. It's called when you find all books, you exactly know what are you testing, what is the behavior you're testing, sorry. And then I'm here, you are configuring the MongoDB connection using MongoDB rule. This is the part of NoSQL unit. Then you define an strategy. And this case, well, in, well, in this case, you are, um, you're pointing to the server that you want to clean MongoDB, wait, it's not, in theory, now. Here you are telling to the uh, NoSQL unit 
that uh, must clean the database and then insert the data define it in initial data JSON. This data is a JSON document that is a simple uh, a book. And then when I call final, this book will be returned. See that here it was using Hamcrest that we think that assert that the books has the expected book. So if we run that test, it will run okay, because um, no SQL unit delete MongoDB and create the data that we want to be returned. Okay, we have finished uh, to writing um, unit tests. Now it's time for integration tests. Integration tests are the counterpart of unit tests. Uh, in, with integration tests, you are validating the collaboration between components. So in this test, you can access a database, you can access to the file system or network, and also you can configure uh, your environment with a special requirements. This is not a problem, but the problem arises when you want to test uh, or write integration tests of enterprise Java applications. Because uh, with uh, Java E6 and beyond, more and more functionalities are being implemented within the container. So for example, uh, we can cite a TDI, and AG, AGVs are configured with annotations, GPA is configured inside the container. So, to write this integration test, we need a container. And this plan a new kind of problem. Who manage the container lifecycle? Someone must start and stop the server. And who create the deployment file? Because at least your container requires a deployment file. And please, do not mock. We are writing integration tests. An integration test, you must not mock any component. Hopefully, GBOS folks have created Arclean. Arclean brings the test to the front end. Basically, uh, Arclean manages the lifecycle container. You don't know how, but uh, it starts and stops the server. Also, uh, gives you the uh, Zoom wrap uh, API to create your deploy file. Exactly, you can create a deploy file or a micro deployment file, because if you are testing free classes, you don't have to package all your application and send it to the server. You can package free classes and send it to the server and they will execute. Can enrich your test classes, we will see lately. And um, Archelian um, gives to the test to be executed inside the container, if you are using any uh, container feature, for example, uh, injection annotation, or against a container and as a client. And finally, it's uh, IDA friendly. So we need no more mocks. To write integration tests with Archelian is as easy as choose a container to execute your test, uh, Glassfish, Tomcat, or GBoss. Archelian starts the server, make the package and send to the server, executes the test, collects all the results, and, send, and finally send to the um, for example, to the um, Jenkins or to your IDE and stops the server. Let's see. Here is a REST application, a simple REST application. That simple is returns all the books inserted when you access the book resource. Um, yeah, uh, trust me that I, I have no GBOS started. And if you see the here the test, you are simply uh, annotating test to be use uh, Archelian runner. In this case, we, because we are um, testing a REST connection, we want that our test runs as a client, not within the container. Here is where we are creating 
our deployment file. Simple, we are creating, we are inserting all the classes that are at book package and the JAX Rias application that is uh, the configuration of REST application. Then, see the name, server should return all books in JSON format. That's not good because it's returned in XML, but well, <laughs> it's misleading me. Um, so here, we are connecting to the server and we return all the books and we are asserting that all books is just this expected uh, result. So we are going to run. Terms of being executed. This also could be done directly from Eclipse, but here is the starting the GPOS server. It runs the test and finally collects the result. He does the build is success. See how here the GPOS is started. Archelian deploy the test work, execute the test, and finally undeploy the test. So um, you don't have to start and stop manually the server. And then your tests run perfectly. Your integration tests run perfectly into the container. And the final part, acceptance tests. Acceptance tests are high level tests that validate that business uh, logic and user interface meets the requirements um, specified by the stakeholders. To write correctly acceptance tests, and the first thing to write is user histories. A user history is a one or two sentence expressed in everyday language from the point of view of end user that gives an, a business value to the um, to, to the product. Normally, the user story uh, sentences have uh, a look like as I want so. It's uh, as an administrator, I want to add new books to a collection so users can borrow them. And uh, this is a, a user story. But then, you should write acceptance criteria. Acceptance criteria is a set of conditions that must be um, meet to consider a user story complete. complete. For example, the previous uh, user story can have this uh, acceptance criteria that the administrator can add new books, administrator can categorize books, or users can borrow books added by administrator. And this is uh, only three, but it will be more and more and more sentences of this kind. But also, a stakeholder must provide concrete examples. These concrete examples must be in the step-by-step -step form, only uh, with, uh, sorry, with um, exact data, without technical uh, language, or without impersonal phrases. For example, create a lot of the rings book, as seen Tolkien as author, etc. This is a step-by-step -step that is clearly understood by, by anyone, and test writer will use it to write the test. So, in enterprise job applications, we have a problem, is that uh, we need user interface uh, access, and, in this, uh, and typically, uh, enterprise job applications uses web. So we need a framework that can access web elements, also can open different kind of browsers, and also can categorize the user stories. We have seen that we've got user stories, acceptance criteria, examples, and all this uh, information must be managed in a, in a better way than only uh, as a document. And this tool is to CD this. To CD this is a tool that um, makes us writing acceptance and regression tests easier. To see this is a Selenium 2 extension, so use this web driver AP to access web elements. Also helps you to organize tests and stories. 
recurrent reports, the test execution, we'll see that creates a really, really um, beautiful reports. And also, and it's so important, measure the functional cover. So your stakeholders will know every time how is advancing the project. So to write acceptance tests with two cities, simple, choose a story, implement page object. Page object is a pattern which models um, web elements user of the user interface as object. So you can access them programmably. Implement a test, li uh, test step library. And finally, you create the test following the acceptance criteria. So if this uh, test passes, you can see that user story is complete. Let's see an example. It's a typical book, an example that we have uh, seen before. In this case, we've got an, an HTML file. It's an input form with a title, the number of pages, and a button that is the will be click when you want to insert this book. And when you insert a message telling if the book has been inserted correctly or not is provided to the user. So let's see how to test in this application. The first thing to do is write a page object. See that page object simple and models the HTML file as an object. Here we can see that we are creating a web element for the title input form, another for the uh, number of pages, and another for the button, and, and another for the message that will be provided to the user. And gives some operations, for example, enter title and number of pages. When we call this method, we are simulating that users are typing into this field, insert book. We are simulating that users are clicking this book, and finally getting the text that we are simulating that Mm, the user are reading this message. Next thing to do is just creating a step library. For example, if you want to insert a new book, you must uh, call on insert book page, insert book. This is a, a method that is here. Sorry, but I can see that here, and then the enters uh, its call. So uh, a step library is a list of uh, steps that user will, will um, execute in a normal way. And finally, the test that must run to see this runner but also, uh, here we are using Archelian, so I have no problems for starting and stopping the server. This is the default page. We are testing this HTML. And the test, what we are doing in the test is opening the insert book page, insert this book. Here we are using the step library, that at the same time are using page object. And then we are uh, asserting that this message is shown to the user. So, this is the same. Archelian will open the, uh, the server. In this case, we are uh, testing uh, application in a Firefox browser. And we'll you will see how the Firefox is opened and how someone mistakenly are uh, writing on the, on the form. See the name of the method also? It's good. The build success, and then 
you can watch the the report. To test, one is pending, the other has passed. You can access, oh, sorry, well, this is the, an overview. Then here is the, the test. All the data, step by step, in, uh, is inserted on book page, this is the, the page is open at. Uh, you uh, enter all the information, and you insert the book, and you should obtain this message. And here is a screenshot on what you, you have executed. So, uh, the, the quality uh, department can see that are executed as um, requirements are same. Okay. We are, uh, today we have talked about uh, unit tests, integration tests, and acceptance tests, but exist uh, different kinds of uh, tests like performance tests, duration tests, smoke tests, and who runs all this kind of tests? Developers uh, must only run unit tests. So, integration tests, acceptance tests will be run by your continuous integration system. The most used open source continuous integration system is uh, Jenkins. A core concept of Jenkins is build jobs. Uh, build jobs are tasks that are executed during the application build and involve tasks like compiling, running unit testing, running integration tests, or even uh, deploying your application to a server. Typically, your uh, applications will contain more than one uh, build job chain it together, so if the application compiles, then we'll run the unit test, and if the run tends pass, can run integration test, and, and so on. So, to manage all this uh, chain of uh, build jobs, build pipeline plugin uh, exists. This plugin simply uh, helps you to create a chain of build jobs and visualize the state of the, of the um, of the execution of your uh, application. So for example, here you can see that we are uh, creating a build job that runs fast tests, and other ones that accept and test, and so on, and, uh, and, the, and, you should, and Jenkins will run first the fast test, if passes, then the accept and test, and until they're built all the, the job, on the project. As a last note, um, so work culture, uh, treats test as a residual code. Um, if there is no time, you don't write test. And this leads you that when you find an issue at production stage, you uh, will waste a lot of time to fix it. So please, try to uh, write tests and not to um, treat them as, a, some, as something external to the application. Also, if you are planning to use continuous delivery, the only way to assure that your application is running correctly is with tests. I would like to say th uh, thank you to the Linux stack uh, folks to uh, let me stay here today, also my wife that are here, and of course you that will use all this material. Any question? I'd like to ask if you can put the Selenium, Selenium tests on Jenkins. Can you run them as well? And what is the condition to do that? I mean, you should have uh, the browser installed over there, right? You should have Firefox or, or something on the Jenkins side. So uh, it's, so yes. Mm, in fact, uh, to see this is a, a Selenium plugin. So um, I always used to see this. I, I have never used. Uh, selenium in the uh, as a um, as a uh, alone. I was used to see this, and of course, yes. If you run them in Jenkins, 
you need to install a, a Firefox or, a, or the Chrome. And also, um, with two CDs, you have uh, an annotation of your test, and there you can specify which version you want to execute that test. Yeah. Or you can also um, configure it as a system environment or in, in your POM. It's just many possibilities to, to configure it. Well, um, this is my, my blog and my Twitter. If you have any questions, you can send me an email. Uh, I will try to help you as much as I can. Also, I have personal cards. If anyone wants one, I can give him one. Thank you.